you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 I have a really, really bad stomach. And I'm also a runner. These two things do not go hand in hand. During one very difficult practice out on the course this fall, we were doing two mile sets at an extremely uncomfortable pace. Toward the end of the second set, I began to get a searing cramp. I was in a lot of pain and discomfort, so naturally walked back to our coaches and left my group. My coach asked me why I was walking, using a tone of annoyance. I told him my stomach was acting up. It just seemed way too hard, and I could not find point in forcing myself to experience that pain. He did not accept that as an excuse, and made me finish the set, even when it took me much longer than everyone else. I was deeply embarrassed. I had been exposed as a coward in front of my team. I was ashamed of this fear, and felt not just like a weak runner, but a weak person. Months later, we had our state tournament race, and I had been injured for about three weeks, and this was my first fast run in a long time. To make matters worse, it was the biggest stage of the season. I tried not to get nervous, but the fear went out. About two minutes into the race, after running through a gauntlet of loud fans, I collapsed. I'd thrown up at the end of races, or after races, many times. It was never this bad, or this soon. Some fans screamed with disgust, and the thought of quitting immediately came into my head. About 45 seconds later, I got back up on my feet and continued on, with a small hope that my race was not completely lost. Just after the first mile mark, about four minutes later, I was on the ground again. This time it was worse. My legs kicked up in the air as I violently spilled out everything left in my stomach onto the ground. <laughs> Sorry, uh, For about a minute and a half, I was down. My face in the dirt, my whole body shaking, coaches telling me to stop. The fact that my race was ruined, sitting in my head, weighing me down. Mr. Crimmins hovered over me. Remembering not to make contact to avoid disqualification, he asked, do you think you can go on? In that moment, I was faced with a similar situation as the blind man. Not saying that Mr. Crimmins is Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave me a similar choice, to go on or to stop. My body was screaming at me to put it out of his misery. Giving up would not only have been easy, but smart. At first, I assumed I would drop out, give up. It would be insane to continue, almost unfair, and it did not even cross my mind to keep going. Then I breathed, and I saw a point in putting myself through this pain. I thought about how my chances to prove myself as a runner were gone, but I still had a chance to prove myself as a person. I remembered the disappointment of that practice months ago, and I thought about how ridiculous I looked with my leg sleeves and headband covered in leaves and vomit. <laughs> I had to believe in myself. Mr. Crimmins was giving me a choice, to believe or to give up on myself, and it was truly my choice to make. It took a lot, but eventually I heaved myself off the ground wiped my face off, and left Mr. Crimmins in the dust. With dirt, leaves, spit, vomit covering my face, I finished the race. My time ended up being the worst of the season, but I was just as proud of that race as I am as my fastest one. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, choosing to let go of that intense fear and disbelief. The result was pretty cool, and something that lasted with me. In that moment, I proved to myself that I was better than that day of practice when I gave in to that fear. <coughs> When Jesus asks the blind man if he believes that he can be cured, and he replies yes, Jesus tells him that he is already saved. It was according to his faith that he is saved. Faith is the key here. This blind man is experiencing deep pain and, deep, deep pain and fear. Jesus gives him a choice. If we believe in Jesus and what he stands for, we can become what he stood for. This goes to say we have the option of failure. It is always easier to choose not to believe and choose not to approve. If the blind man said, well, I guess not, Jesus, but give it your best shot, he would, not have had the, he would not have had the faith necessary to be cured. We hardly ever realize the power we have in making a change in our lives. The phrase, while incredibly cliche, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish great things, is not nearly embraced enough by the human race. An attitude is such a powerful thing, or mental approach is the key. The blind man's attitude, or faith as Jesus puts it, was ultimately the key to being cured. If we put our minds to it, 
We can not only do what we want to do, but we can do more than we ever thought we could. This is often realized through sports. And for me, it came through running. Running is something that fully forces you to embrace your individuality and ultimately your identity. It's something that has punished me and at the same time taught me a lot about myself. A fellow runner once told me, if death is the separation of body and spirit, then running is the purest form of aliveness. You run off of nothing but your character, not your gym, not your looks, your gear, or your wallet, but yourself. Often you find that your true self is already out there running. It forces you to embrace who you are. It is a very direct testament to your character when you are under a lot of pain. Running highs can be described as a feeling of having your mind, body, and spirit as one. I believe there is a very large connection between being a strong person and a strong runner. Physically, we are capable of incredible things. It is all about training the mind. As Mr. DeSalvo and Ms. Thalen discussed earlier in the year, there is a deep connection between suffering and joy. It is in the times of most uncomfortability that we learn the most about ourselves and our faith is tested. Failure shapes a good attitude. The times when we are faced with walls we do not think we can break down, that our characters are revealed, and we learn what we are made of. Teddy Roosevelt said, if he fails, he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. People without challenges in their lives, whether they be social, athletic, academic, anything, may not have to go through failure, but never experience the ultimate confidence and realization that is gained from it. So challenge yourself and believe. If you tell yourself you're going to have a good class or a great practice, you will. The point here is that we can decide to believe, and we can also decide to fail. The blind man chose to be cured. He maintained faith despite despair, and for this he was rewarded. We can choose to believe in Jesus, just as the blind man did, and in ourselves, and the things Jesus stood for, and the things we desire, can come into our lives. So the question is not whether God can bring self-fulfillment, peace, and success to our lives, but if we can. And we can. It is up to us to decide.